Hey everybody, it's your favorite Teacher Tutorial Tuesday, Cat Nora. I'm here to say this is part three of Boom Card Creation 101. So I'll let Coach take it away. Fill in the blank. So you drag that in, it basically drops in a text box. And this text box, when you double click on it, allows you to put in your answer. So if your answer is 10, click Submit. It puts 10 up here because that is an answer. You might also want 10.0. Could submit that. And that is also an answer choice that is relevant, or 10.00. Could submit that. Um, so those are our three choices of answers. If we just leave it at that and click off of it, you'll see that it lists them here. Now we might want to change the font size in there because. Um, if you look at it, like when the kids go to type into it, even though the box is super huge, the numbers are going to show up very, very small. So you can adjust font size and font face here. Let's go with that Pacifico. Oh, there it is. You can bounce the font size really, really big. 100 is where we max out. We want the text to align in the center of the box, but you can also change that left or right. Font color, if you want it to be a certain color, you can do that as well. Now these, <laughs> these other ones here, uh, numeric. A lot of times I'll have to click on the info tab to help remind me on what is what. So only evaluate numeric value. Do not use it, uh, do not use if format matters. So. If you want the students to be putting in um, commas and things like that, then you would not use this. However, I don't really mind about um, that for this, so I could click on it. Um, and then it's just basing it off of the value of the numbers that they type in. I ignore white space. Uh, it removes all white space from answers. So if they put in spaces, um, I love the examples that they give because it I feel like it makes it really clear. In this example, they have an equation, like an algebraic equation with spaces. Um, and even if the kids put in spaces, then when it evaluates this, what they type in, it will ignore whatever spaces they put in. So that can be helpful if they're typing in multiple things. Because if, if they were if you're not ignoring the white space and you put in a very specific, like A space B is the correct answer. If they type in AB without a space, it'll mark it as wrong. So ignoring white space can be helpful. Multi-line, the enter key will start a new line of text instead of submitting the answer. So if they're writing like a longer version of something, this could be helpful. Um, I find that Having the enter key submit the answer is great if you're doing boom cards on like a Chromebook or something like that. Case sensitive, so capital letters matter, lowercase letters matter. Open resource, so any student response is allowed, but you must manually grade it. So this could be helpful if you're doing like a little essay or something like that. All right, so those are these items right here. All right, so here we are. Now it has commas here, but that's just to show you what your answer choices are. If I go into preview mode, it'll just be a random box here. So we know the answer is 10. So if I put in 10, it is correct. Having multiple answers in here can make it, um, can help accommodate for different things that they might be typing in. This was helpful for me when I did something like money and I wanted them to have it in a certain form. So if I wanted it to be $10 with decimal points or $10 without, then it would only list those two as possible answers. There shouldn't be a zero in there. Interesting. So to change your answer choices, you just click on the X's and I'll get rid of them. Click 
can also type in new ones. Oops, that is not the symbol I was looking for. Oh, yeah, I see why. So <laughs> it's funny. This is just a continuation of this first answer choice. The box was not large enough to accommodate it, so it cut it onto the next line. That's an important thing to notice because if a kid's typing in $10 with a double zero after the decimal point, then it'll kind of make things a little funkier. Um, so if I were to type in, ooh, it just fits. Nice. But also having this should be a correct answer as well. Great. Nice. It looks like I'm learning a few things new along the way as well. All right, so that is fill in the blank. We have a video that goes over sounds and how to add them and record them. You can just drag one in and then you pick one. Yep, so I did my brass one. For this, you can adjust the size of it. You can add a background to it if you want. Um, again, you can add borders and things of that nature. You can make the border super fancy. Um, all that is to say that it's similar to most of the other things that you can do with this right bar here. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I could tell you about sounds. You can make them transparent. Here's something I haven't tried yet, but it could be interesting, is to make a sound draggable and to make a drop zone. A lot of times I'll make drop zones just with a text box. So let's shrink this to be something that would fit inside this drop zone. Let's vertically align that and center it up. Let's add a quick border. There we go. Uh, let's make it dark. Oh, now we have to <laughs> identify this as a drop zone. There we go. And then we'll... Oops, let's link that to that. There we go. Still linked. Let's duplicate this. So this one is draggable and this one is not. Let's make the sound something that we can work with. So we have exercises. Let's do arm circles. And we'll change this one to sky reaches. So we'll do arm circle drop zone. So these are not set to autoplay um, because there's multiple ones. What that means is kids will have to click on them to get them to play. So we click on it. Looks like we got 10 arm circles here. You can click on it again to stop it. To do sky reaches, start by keeping your arms in cloak. And we want to put arm circle in here. So we click and drag. Looks like we got 10. And then we click submit. We are correct. I hadn't considered that. I might try that for another lesson, is to have students take sounds um, and to sort them. So you could have them say a word. We could have it. We could, we could have this, I'm like thinking out loud here, we could have it say cat, and then we could have multiple ones here that have somebody saying the word cat. It could also be cat, have it broken down into its parts, and then they'd have to drag their answer into the correct spot. Cool. I like that idea. I might try that for the future. So it looks like they also have a video feature. I have not tried this yet. Looks like it's new. It's an experimental feature that they're trying out. Um, so you could copy a YouTube URL and paste it in here. And oh, look at that. You can resize it to fit. Ooh, it does look like you do need to pay attention to how you resize it. Because it will not automatically resize the uh, video. So I would want to make sure that the whole thing is in the frame. Probably somewhere around there. We'll go to preview. 
Look at that. That's a little video right in there. Let's click on it. Welcome into another teacher tutorial. Well, that's crazy. Nice. So I guess you could use this if you want to record yourself introducing how to do the activity, and then you could just drop it right in there, and the kids have a little thing to help them kind of refresh their memory. So I guess this would be great for like a digital uh, distance learning type lesson. So you can kind of like record yourself teaching the lesson, and then they can reference it um, if they get stuck. The only other things we haven't gone over would be um, probably pretty much the details. Oops. So up in the details, you can change the image that shows up when people are searching for your stuff. You can change the title of it. You can say what grades it belongs to. You can put in keywords to help people search for it. You can set your price. Um, the only thing I would say that isn't really self-explanatory, I mean, this makes sense. On-screen keyboard might be helpful if they're on a tablet or something like that. Um, but really, the only thing on here that might need a little extra explanation is the randomizing cards. So if you had like an instruction card and a couple of things like that, you could say, I want it to have three cards and then randomize everything after that. Um, so when shuffling the cards, do not randomize the first N, standing for number, of cards. It's useful if the, like I said, the first cards used to teach a lesson. Some, a lot of times I'll have um, cards at the end of mine, um, and there's no way to kind of not randomize those, so I usually just take this off and have it go in a certain order. Flow Magic is an interesting thing I have not played around with yet, but um, it allows them to go in a certain flow. Like you can designate, if they get this right, then they go on to this particular slide, whereas uh, if they get it wrong, then they go to a different one. This, I think, could be really cool to play around with. Um, I've not tested it out yet. If you have, though, let me know in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to pick your brain about how you use it and things like that. So that should cover a bunch of the things that you can find in Boom Cards. If you want to know more about a specific one, just let me know down in the comments below. and I'll be happy to dive in a little more detail uh, with a specific tutorial or that item. As always, take care, be happy, be healthy, have fun.